So we dealt with exponential functions yesterday. Today we're going to deal with a transition from exponential form to what's called logarithmic form. So we knew yesterday that our exponential form was of the form y equals some base power to the x. We put a constant out in front, but it really doesn't matter. If I move to what's called exponential form, the transition looks something like this. And we read this as the log base b of y equals x. So that's how this transitions. Now, the way I look at it is the following. I kind of think if I'm in exponential form and I slide my base over, so in other words, I slide my base under the y and then add a logarithm, I get my logarithm form. If I take and want to go back, I slide my base under the x and there's my exponential. So let's take a look at something like this. Here's a truth, or here's a statement. We want to know what is the log base 2 of 8? Well, we have no idea. I'm going to take this and say, all right, if I was to take and say, I have no idea what the unknown is, then I'd put an x over here. And then I'd slide my base to get this in exponential form so I can try to solve it, because I have no idea what logarithm means at this point. So if I slide that, I have 8 is equal to 2 to the x power. We have an exponential form like we had yesterday, but the problem is the two bases aren't the same. But I can make 8 into a base of 2 simply by going 2 to the third is equal to 8. So if 2 to the third is equal to 2 to the x, then x is equal to 3, and that is equivalent to the log base 2 of 8. So you'll notice the relationship here, that 8 is 2 cubed, and that happens to be the answer. So what logarithm actually means is what power of the base is the number. So what power of 2 is 8? It's the third power. Now, there's a couple of special type bases that are written a little differently and have some implied values. If we want to talk about the log base 10, typically this is called the common logarithm. And rather than putting a 10 here, they put nothing. So they just write the log of x. This is similar to square roots, which we know as an index of 2, it's just implied, and they don't write it. Now, if we use a log base e, e was that number that we talked about the other day, 2.71, that's our base, then they don't write log base e commonly. They write ln x, and that's a button on your calculator, and that's known as a natural logarithm. So let's evaluate a couple of these. We have log 100, which... If you want to write it in to make it easier for you, that's fine. Log base 10 of 100, that's the same thing. Or what power of 10 is 100? Well, the log of 100 is just 2, because 10 to the second power is 100. Likewise, if you want to rewrite this as a log base e of e cubed, you say what power of e is e to the third power? Well, this is basic. 3. And it's quite easy to do that way as long as you have a number that is an integer power of your base. But what happens when we don't have integer powers of bases? Like in this case, I want to simplify log base 2 of 1 16th. And we're going to do this without a calculator. So what I usually do is set them equal to an unknown. And then I'll change it from logarithmic form to exponential form by sliding the base over. So what I have is I have 1 16th equals 2 to the x power. And this works right into our exponential concept of yesterday. We need to make 1 16th into a power of 2. Well, if I take the reciprocal of 1 16th, then 16 is a power of 2. Taking the reciprocal is like taking the negative power, so this is 2 
to the negative fourth is equal to 2 to the x, and x is equal to negative 4. So what that's saying is it's saying that 1 16th is the negative fourth power of 2. What power of the base is the number? This one's a little trickier. What power of 1 ninth is the fourth root of 3? That's what that says. I slide my base like I've done previously. I get 1 ninth raised to the x is equal to the fourth root of 3. Knowing some properties of exponents, we know that the index of 4 means that we have a rational exponent of 1 fourth. And then if I want 9 to be a power of 3, that's 3 squared, but I need to take the reciprocal. So this is 3 to the negative second power raised to the x. And we know we have a power of a power situation, so we can multiply. And now we can lose the bases since they're equivalent. Set the powers equal to each other. I have 1 fourth equaling negative 2x. So x equals negative 1 8. So a couple more, except in this case our x's are in different places within the logarithm. Still a similar solving situation. You want to take it out of logarithmic form, put it into exponential form because it's easier to solve that way. We have x to the negative 1 equaling 5. I can do this a couple of different ways. What I like to do is I like to raise the power in such a way that I get a power of 1. So if I raise this to the negative 1 power, power of power, I multiply powers, but whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So this goes to x to the first is equal to 5 to the negative 1, or 1 fifth is equal to x. Likewise over here, slide my base, I now have 5 cubed is equal to x minus 7. This is a simpler solution. That's 125 is equal to x minus 7. Add 7 to both sides, and I get 132 is equal to x. So now we're going to take a look at graphing logarithms. This is basically a parent function, all right, and we want to graph some simple values for log base 2 of x. Again, we need to know what logarithm means to be able to do this. So since this means what power of the base is the number, then this number needs to be nice powers of 2. So I could say 1 is a power of 2. I could say 2 is a power of 2. 4 is a power of 2. A half is a power of 2, and a quarter is a power of 2. So what power of 2 is 4? That's 2. What power of 2 is 2? That's 1. What power of 2? This is the one people have problems with. What power of 2 is 1? That's a 0 power. What power of 2 is 1 half? That's negative 1. What power of 2 is 1 fourth? That's negative 2. Now some people have troubles generating that, and they like sliding the base like we have been for everything else, in which case you get y equals, or x equals 2 to the y. And then what those people will do is they'll take and say, oh, I can find powers of 2 much easier, so they'll pick y's and solve for x's. That's fine, but when we start translating this, it's a little bit more difficult. So this is why I like knowing what that base function is, or that parent function, and then I just plug in nice powers of 2. So let's go ahead and graph this. When we graph this, we've got 0 or 1, 0. We have 2, 1, 4, 2, negative 1 and a half, or I'm sorry, uh, positive half and negative 1, and a quarter and negative 2, something like this. So this looks a little bit differently than our exponentials. 
has a sideways slant to it rather than rising up. And you'll notice that what power of a positive number is equal to some unknown value? No power will ever be a negative number. So we can never have a negative x value. Therefore, we get an asymptote that's vertical in this case. So if we wanted to find our domain, in this case our domain is x is greater than 0. Can't be equal to. In our range, it appears this goes up forever and down forever. So our range is basically all reals. Let's take a look at some translations now. We've got an hk value here. h equaling negative 1, k equaling 4. And like we've done on our other problems, we'll go over 1, down 4. Put this fictional set of axes down. And we're going to graph our parent function from that point. Our parent function is the same parent function as we had before, log base 2 of x. We're going to pick nice powers of 2. Quarters of power of 2, halves of power of 2, 1's of power of 2, 2's of power of 2, 4's of power of 2. The power of 2 is 4, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to graph all those points from this new coordinate set of axes. So I go 1 over 0 up, 2 over 1 up, 4 over 2 up. Half over down, quarter over two down. Once again, we're here. So I wanted a domain and range. Again, we look at our asymptote in this case. Our asymptote is going to be x equals negative one. So our domain would be x is greater than negative one, and our range is all reals. Continue. So now we've got an HK and an A. We have an A value of 2. That's your Y multiplier. H value 6. K value 2. So I'm going to move over to 6, 2. Put a fictional set of axes. In this case, we have log base 3 of x equaling y as our parent function. We'll take and pick some nice clean powers of 3. 9 is a good power of 3. 3 is a good power of 3. 1 is a power of 3. A third and a ninth. What power of 3 is 9? 2. What power of 3 is 3? 1. What power of 3 is 1? 0. Power of 3 is a third, negative 1, and negative 2. There's my x and my y. Graph these points, and then once we're done, we multiply our y's by 2. So I get 4, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4. Let's go ahead and do that from this point. We're going to run out of real estate, I think, but we'll do what we can. If I move over 1 and up 0, that's right here. I move over 3 from this point. 1, 2, 3, up 2. Put that point right here. Move over a third, down 2, somewhere around here. And a ninth and down 4, somewhere right here. Here's my asymptote. And my graph is something like this. I'm going to check a point since I haven't done that in a while. Here's a point 9, 4. I'm going to plug it into this problem and work it out. So what I've got is I've got 2 log base 3 of 9 minus 6 plus 2. Hopefully I get 4 out of this. So this is 2 times the log base 3 of 3 plus 2. 
What power of 3 is 3? That's 1 times 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. What do you know? We checked it out and it's right. Domain in this case, asymptotes here. So it uh, looks like x is greater than 6. Range, once again, all reals. We're seeing a pattern. And then we move from there. This last problem is going to be complicated by a couple of things. One, our base is a fraction. And two, what's inside our function is not of the proper form. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite this. We have y equals the log base one-fourth of the quantity. Remember we have to have a coefficient of 1. 2 times x minus 3. And then this has to be a fraction. That has to be the b form. So this is log base 1 fourth of x minus 3 over 1 half. And now we have an h value equaling 3 and a b value equaling a half, which means this is our x multiplier. So now we're going to look at a parent function of log base one-fourth of x. So we need powers of one-fourth. One-fourth is obviously a power of one-fourth. One-sixteenth is a power of one-fourth. 1 is a power of 1 fourth, 4 is a power of 1 fourth, and so is 16. So let's take and say, what power of 1 fourth is a fourth? Obviously 1. What power of 1 fourth is a 16th? 2. What power of 1 fourth is 1? 0. What power of 1 fourth is 4? Negative 1. And what power of 1 fourth is 16? Negative 2. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and multiply all of our x values by a half. So this makes this 1 32nd, 1 8th, 1 half, 2, and 8. And we're going to graph all those from this translated point of 3, 0. Some of these are so small, it's going to be kind of tough to graph, but we'll do our best. From here, let's go over 8 and down 2. And then we'll go over 2 and down 1. We'll go over a half and 0. And 8. And one. Good luck going over a 32nd, but you get the idea. So now you take a look at this graph. It appears once again to have that logarithmic form with a vertical asymptote. Let's check a point. Uh, this is the point 11, negative 2. Plug it in and make sure it works out. So if I plug in 11, I get log base 1 fourth of 2 times 11 minus 6. 2 times 11 is 22 minus 6. We've got log base 1 fourth. So log base 1 fourth of that ends up being 16. What power of 16, or what power of 1 fourth is 16? Well, that's a negative 2 power. And so it checks out. So I've graphed it correctly. Domain is x is greater than 3. Range is all real. And that's all we've got. Fill out your summary, do your mind math lab, and we'll talk about this tomorrow.